In 1985, early in the morning, two beloved married school teachers made a daring escape from a museum with a painting that would later be valued at over a hundred million dollars. And they were never caught. Before we get into this story, if you like dark, strange, and mysterious true crime stories, I encourage you to take a selfie with the like button and secretly give it bunny ears. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe button and click the little bell so you never miss an episode. So in 1985, the day after Thanksgiving, the two school teachers, Jerry and Rita Alter, stood outside the Tucson Museum of Art waiting for it to open. The temperature was 55 degrees, but Jerry and Rita were wearing heavy overcoats. Waiting outside with them was a security guard who worked at the museum, and he was just waiting to be let into the museum to begin his shift. Another security guard who was already inside the museum unlocked the door and let the guard in. Now, these guards were not supposed to let any visitors into the museum yet, but since one had already been talking with Jerry and Rita, they just decided to go ahead and let them in. So Jerry and Rita walked into the museum. The guard who unlocked the door went on his way to do his job. The security guard they had been, ta they had been talking to outside walked with them up some stairs. As they walked up the stairs, Rita began asking the guard questions about art. The guard was more than happy to continue their conversation with these two sweet school teachers. So as Rita and the guard talked about the many fascinating facts about the art and paintings in the museum, Jerry walked ahead up the stairs. Alone on the next floor, Jerry quickly pulled out a utility knife or something very sharp and quickly cut a painting out of its frame. Then he either rolled up the painting or partly bent it and hid the painting under his shirt. Jerry then returned to the stairs where Rita was still talking with the guard and Jerry and Rita quickly said goodbye and headed out of the museum. They sped away in a silver two-door car. The guard thought their exit was strange, so he continued up the stairs to be sure nothing was amiss. But unfortunately, he discovered that a 1955 painting by William D. Kooning named Woman Ochre had been stolen right out of its frame. Fibers from the painting's canvas were still dangling from the edges of the frame. Let's take a look at this painting and a couple others also by Kooning. This is a painting by Kooning from 1944. It is one of his earliest works and honestly, his paintings go downhill from here, becoming more vague and haphazardly drawn. Here is an example. If we look closely, we can see the woman's head and the rest of her shapely body. The painting that was stolen by Jerry and Rita is named Woman Ochre, and it was painted in 1955 and is nearly impossible to decipher. Here is the head, the hair, and down here is her dress. Jerry and Rita went on to retire from their teaching jobs in New York and moved to New Mexico. They had friends who described them as a sweet couple, and they had a hard time believing Jerry and Rita would ever steal anything. Let's take a look at a picture of Jerry and Rita at the time of the theft and compare it to the police drawing of the suspects. It looks just like Jerry and Rita. One theory was that Jerry dressed as a female for the heist and that Rita dressed as a male. However, this drawing shows that Jerry looked like Jerry and Rita looked like Rita, so that theory is false. Another theory is that someone else stole the painting and then sold it to the unwitting couple. However, the person who stole the painting would be well aware of its massive value and would not have sold it for a price that two school teachers could afford. In addition, Jerry and Rita hung the painting in their bedroom behind their bedroom door, so no one could see the painting except themselves. This fact that only Jerry and Rita would ever see the painting really stands out when we read some of the short fiction stories that Jerry published. Jerry actually self-published three books on Amazon in 2011, just a year before he died at age 81. One of these books is a collection of short stories called The Cup and the Lip, 
And this book is a short story titled The Eye of the Jaguar, in which a grandmother and granddaughter team up to steal a painting from a museum. The psychology of the security guard is used heavily in the plan. In the story, one of the two characters distracts the security guard while the other character steals a painting. A telling detail is that the two characters visited the museum six months prior to the visit, during which time they studied the type of screwdriver that would be required to open a particular painting's frame. Other fiction stories in The Cup and the Lip involve traveling to exotic locations, which these two school teachers actually did in real life. They traveled all over seven continents, and when they died, they had over a million dollars in their bank account. They made no money from this painting theft, so as we try to think of where two school teachers would get a million dollars, it is worth noting that Jerry claimed adventure travel was his avocation. An avocation is defined as a hobby or minor occupation. It seems likely they acquired money from traveling in some manner. If you have any idea of how they would make money traveling, I mean lots of money, like millions, tell us in the comments. Teachers who taught at the same school as Jerry and Rita said that each time the school had a spring break or a holiday break, Rita would tell the other teachers about the trip that she and Jerry planned to take. It seems financially difficult for two married teachers to take so many trips around the world. However, they did not have kids, so do you think it would have been possible for them to do that much traveling? Leave your thoughts in the comments so we can discuss. There's a link to the book of Jerry's short stories in the video description. Some of the stories are great, some are not so good. I recommend reading The Eye of the Jaguar, which is a painting heist story, and also The Fortune Teller and The Handyman. Unfortunately, there is no table of contents. Alright guys, that's going to do it. I hope you enjoyed this story, and if you have an idea for a story that I should cover, please tell me in the comments. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.